Firmware version 2 for the Nikon Z63 is here, and it's a massive update that brings lots of features that we've seen in the Z8 and the Z9, making the Z63 more professional than ever before, and also brings in some new features that we haven't seen in any Nikon Z camera until today. In this video, I'm going to take you through my favorite features and also explain to you on how some of those new features work if you're new to them and haven't seen them before. The Nikon Z63 now has bird subject detection in its autofocusing system. Previously, you were able to use the automatic subject detection or the animal subject detection and it would still recognize birds, but the advantages of the bird detection is that it's better at recognizing different shapes and sizes of birds and also better at recognizing them in flight and means it's less likely to jump to a busy background if it's high contrast or confusing against your subject in your frame. Firmware version 2 brings with it auto capture. Auto capture is an established feature that we've seen in the Nikon Z8 and in the Nikon Z9, but we've never seen it in the Nikon Z63 before. This is a professional feature that allows you to lock your camera in a fixed position, and then if you have a subject that either enters the frame at a specific speed or distance or from a set direction, the camera will then automatically trigger and take images as if you were taking them yourself, and you can even make use of it with video. Auto capture is incredibly useful for wildlife, sports, or any scenario where you can't be close to your camera or close to the action that's happening in front of you. If auto capture is a new feature to you, there are lots of videos on the Nikon Europe YouTube account that can help you to set up and get the most out of it. The improvements that we saw to pixel shift shooting in the Nikon Z8 have also been added in the Nikon Z63. This means that you can make use of pixel shift shooting with focus shift shooting or with auto bracketing, allowing you to create focus stacked pixel shift images for really high resolution and great detail, or allowing you to create pixel shift images with auto bracketed exposure shots, allowing you to create that HDR and high detail in highlights and shadows at the same time, all while producing a high resolution, higher megapixel count image. Pixel shift with focus shift is incredibly useful for close-up macro detail, but also useful for things like landscapes and architecture, just allowing you to capture more detail up to 96 megapixels, but also then giving you the flexibility to ensure your depth of field is sharp from front to back by also adding in the focus shift shooting option as well. Firmware version 2 makes the Z63 the first camera in the Z series to add the C2PA authentication standard. This means that the provenance data of your image can also be carried over even through editing when using a compliant editing software that also supports that C2PA standard. To register your Z63, you do need to add it to the Nikon Cloud and that Nikon Cloud system will allow you to download the authentication certificate to your camera, giving you access to the C2PA standard menu and then allowing you to turn this feature on or off. A lot of the features that we're gonna go through now are features that we've seen in the most recent firmware update for the Nikon Z8. Maximum Aperture Live View can allow the camera to make use of your lens's brightest aperture. If it's an f1.2 lens, it's gonna allow in way more light, making it much easier to make use of things like focus peaking and also improve autofocus in low light situations. The lens will be set to its brightest aperture for the autofocus and manual focus features, but as soon as you go to take your image, your aperture will then revert back to the setting that you've chosen. When making use of high-speed frame capture in the Nikon Z63, firmware version 2 brings two new additions. We first of all have a new frame rate, so allow alongside the 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, or 120 frames per second, we have a new option for 15 frames per second, allowing you to be more selective about the exact speed that you want when making use of high-speed frame capture. The second adjustment is also the new introduction of a new image quality. This is still gonna be shooting in JPEG, but it now allows you to choose from a JPEG normal to go up to a JPEG fine, improving overall image quality when making use of high-speed frame capture. High-speed frame capture is the setting that you'll use in conjunction with pre-release capture. In-body focus limiter is a new setting that allows you to specifically choose exactly where you want your camera to focus. You can set a minimum or furthest distance, meaning that if there's something in your foreground that can be distracting to your focusing system, the camera will effectively ignore it. Or if there's something distracting in your background that you don't want the camera to jump to, you can choose and set the distance, meaning that the camera will only focus in the range that you've given it. 
A good example would be trying to photograph a moving subject but through a fence. You can limit the autofocus in distance to ignore the fence in the foreground, meaning you're only going to be focusing on the subject in the background. Another good example would be if you're trying to follow a subject in the foreground with a very distracting background. It might be a crowd in a grandstand, or it might be a cliff full of lots of grass and rocks. It means that you can then focus on the subject at the distance that's closest to you and ignore anything going on behind. You can now adjust the thickness setting of your auto focusing point, meaning it's much easier to keep track of where your focus point is located in your frame. I'm really excited to see that recall shooting functions has been added to the Nikon Z6 III. This is a function that I use all the time on my Nikon Z8 and Nikon Z9. What recall shooting functions allows you to do is add a collection of settings on a button. So if you want to change your entire setup, whether it's shutter speed, aperture, ISO, your autofocusing settings, you can do that. Or if you just want to change one setting, like shutter speed, I often use it for panning shots. So if I want to go from a fast shutter speed to a slow shutter speed to allow me to attain a panning shot of a moving subject, I can easily and very quickly without having to go through all my different shutter speed options. The difference between recall shooting functions and recall shooting functions hold is how you interact with the button. With recall shooting functions, you have to push and hold the button to hold those settings. Whereas with recall shooting functions hold, the camera will hold those settings for you. So you can push the button, let go, the camera holds those settings until you press the button again. There's also been improvements in extended support for manual focus lenses. When it comes to using non-CPU lens data, we now have the additions that were added into the Nikon Z8. We can make use of any focal length, we can set any maximum aperture, and we can also set a specific lens name. Meaning, if you're using manual focusing lenses, you can be more organized than ever before. There's also been adjustments that affect the Z63's customization specifically. Now when the rear screen on your Z63 is flipped out, the eye sensor on the back of the camera is automatically deactivated. You can also now customize the illumination button on the top of the camera that's traditionally used to illuminate your top plate display, but if you want to set that to a different setting, you can. When it comes to customizing, you can customize more buttons and assign more functions than ever before. View Assist on the Nikon Z63 has been improved, matching that of the View Assist on the Nikon Z8. This View Assist has been adjusted to closely match that of the red technical LUT. Versus the original View Assist, this means that it's much easier to get a more accurate preview of your overall exposure. The behavior of the HDMI when connected to an external monitor has also been adjusted. Previously, when you stopped recording, the HDMI would cause a blackout on the external monitor. Now, when you stop recording or when you change settings like picture control, that view on the external monitor is maintained and the blackout is gone. When it comes to Nikon Imaging Cloud, there's been improvements to the menu system and how you interact with the Imaging Cloud in your camera. First of all, the first setup stage menu has been adjusted to make it easier to set up the Nikon Z63 with the Imaging Cloud. Also, there's been improvements and adjustments to how the camera will automatically update its firmware via Imaging Cloud. And finally, when it comes to adding new imaging recipes from the cloud, that's also been improved in the camera's menu system as well. Firmware version 2 for the Nikon Z63 is a substantial update that brings with it lots of new features, some of which we've seen in the Z8 and the Z9, but also some that are exclusive to the Z63 itself. This means that with firmware version 2, the Z63 is incredibly good for advanced amateurs for stills and for video, but also pushes it even further into meeting the demands of professional photographers and videographers. Firmware version 2 is available to download for your Nikon Z63 now.